All right, Cam, you know, I follow this stuff and I try to track everybody in the nation and I love college football and I will watch any game at any time. And again, I, I try to cover as much as possible and try to see everybody. But this program, I think I've told you this before, is one of the few programs in the nation that that truly fascinates me. So it's UCLA out west for reasons that I think that they should do much better than they they actually play on the field because of where they're located, that they should be able to get recruits, they should be able to hang with USC, and they just don't. So they're, they're a program that fascinates me. Penn State just in recent years because of the Paterno situation in Sandusky and if they were going to bounce back, but not Penn State in and of themselves. This would be the only other one that that fascinates me all the time and this is a situation with you get a big name coach you get a guy who's proven that he can win you have the talent already on the roster to a certain extent but as we've talked about and you've thrown out the numbers and really convinced me that didn't need to convince me I, I knew what the what the talent level was in South Florida but basically gave me confirmation of the four and five star recruits right in your backyard that this is just a this is a keg that could just explode at some point. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people talk about college football being better when Miami is good, you know, and it just it balances the country, um, you know, and we're a microwave dynasty, as it were, like Miami, you know, until the 80s wasn't really anything uh, to speak of for college football purposes. And, you know, going back and forth on Twitter with West Virginia fans leading up to and in the aftermath of the Russell Athletic Bowl, you know, they're talking about, okay, all-time wins. Like, we have so many more than Miami and this, that, and the third. And a good friend of mine, Ian Hest, who works down here uh, in South Florida, he's a journalist, he put up a, a tweet and said, you know, don't let anybody ever get away with the all-time wins argument because number two on that list is Yale. And they're nobody's – powerhouse. You're never going to convince anybody that, okay, Yale is going to... So, you know, yeah, but it's it's been basically, you know, since the late 70s, early 80s. So, you know, basically spanning my lifetime is when Miami has been a team that has been in the national spotlight of college football. And I'm going to go there because this is a time when I will go there. Five, should be six, national championships. Guys, the most first-round draft picks off of one team ever. The first uh, most tied for the most first-round draft picks in any one singular draft. I mean, legends at every position on the field. I mean, in this recruiting class, we have Zach Fiegels, who's committed, who's the son of Jeff Fiegels, who went to the University of Miami and punted in the NFL for 22 seasons. So even if you're going down to the end of the bench on special teams, he only punts three or four times a game, we have one of the best guys in that position in the history of football has come from our program. So I don't think it's just you who is really like, okay, well, yeah, I'm fascinated by Miami. Even if there's people who love to hate us, like they want to see Miami so they can root against us because, you know, we're all that is evil and unholy in football and everything. But yeah, with the re recruiting base that we have down here, with our talent, with our history of success, I think that Miami is a team that people should and do worry about if you look at the ratings for our bowl games ratings for the thursday night games when we're on espn ratings all time on games on espn nearer at the top of all those lists is going to be a game with the university of miami so i know people say and have continued to say oh miami is not relevant miami has not been good recently miami has been relevant since 1979 and so i think that you know while people might not want to admit that i think there are a lot of people out there like you who, for whatever reason, one or another, look at the University of Miami as one of those programs that if college football is going to be great, Miami should be great. Okay, I don't think you can disagree with this, and this is a great discussion for another time, uh, that when you talk about West, okay, you bring up West Virginia. I Anybody who follows college football and has an inkling of the way things stand today and the way they've stood for all time generally can categorize West Virginia. They're a top, 30 program in the country and they should know where they where they sit and th and that's basically what it is you know they've had a nice tradition a nice program but th nobody cares that much outside of west virginia about right. west virginia the thing about miami is you would get the most polar opposite arguments about miami both negative and positive and i'm not talking about people that that hate on miami i'm talking about even objective observers like myself you would get the most polar opposite arguments about where the program places all time for many of the reasons you just cited because it just came onto the map in 1980 
won a first national championship in 1983, where all the blue bloods, you go back to the 20s or the 30s, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Alabama, USC, Texas, on down the line. Uh, and that's and that's part of it. Uh, Florida State would also be uh, in that uh, kind of, uh, are, are they one of the elite or what, what have they really done? Um, what did they do before 1980 kind of argument? So, so there, there is an interesting argument where you would place Miami uh, if you're taking the entirety of college football history. You would have to agree with that, that you could understand people weighing in. Like if you throw out Oklahoma and you have a 10-person panel of very knowledgeable people, they're going to slot Oklahoma fairly close to the same spot. And you could go on down the line with everybody that, that's relevant. And then you throw Miami, you could have a number three ranking, you could have a number 15 rank. It, they could be all over the place because of that history kind of being just emerging, like you say, in the microwave, and then also even after they emerged here in the last 15 years of being very uneven. No, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, there, the variance that we'll call it, you know, of where people might place Miami uh, would be the greatest of any team, you know, um, out there, you know, so, and also notice anybody watching, Mark is the one who brought up Florida State. I didn't say anything about them. So just going to put that out there because I didn't. But yeah, I mean, I think that you know, it, it's an interesting study when you really look at, okay, you know, for some of those things, like I grew up in, in the state of Michigan. This is the University of Michigan Stadium over my shoulder. Like I grew up as a Michigan fan. I went there uh, for games. I was there for the Cordell Stewart Hair Mary, all those kind of things. For Michigan, if you look back, you know, the school's founded in like 18... 27 or something like that and has been playing you know football since the dawn of time you know there's it's been consistent for way more than 100 years but for miami my the university of miami wasn't even founded until 1925. there were years where we didn't even you know have, have a football team and then it was a middling outfit and then you know once schnellenberger got there boom it just took off so you know you have that so you're talking about you know the university was around for 50 something years and the football team didn't do anything of relative note. And then all of a sudden just took off, you know, exponential growth versus Michigan. And, and again, I'm saying that because I'm a native Michigan. I grew up in Detroit and, you know, over my shoulder. But I'm saying, but, you know, there's been consistency basically for the, you know, 130 years of college football. Like it's, it, it's a very different kind of situation. But, you know, I, I enjoy it. Um, you know, obviously this is my school. I bleed orange and green. You know, I'm wearing orange and green every time that I come on uh, – to the to the show but yeah it, it would be interesting really when you think about you know what are it's almost like talking about um a basketball mvp like what is the qualification for that are we only going on a recency bias are we going all time are we looking at you know only college production are we adding in nfl and professional things like there's so many ways that you can couch it and depending on how you look at it miami could be number one which I think is fair. I don't think that everybody would put them there, but you can make a case for them at number one. You can make a case for them at number 33, technically. But it's just all on how you want to look at the situation and kind of through the prism that you're looking at how you're going to evaluate these teams. But yeah, I think it that brings up a very interesting conversation. All right, Kim Underwood, State of the U. Always an interesting conversation, whether it's historic or otherwise. It's usually uh, the here and now uh, today with recruiting, with uh, the quarterback situation, and obviously with a number of NFL players uh, added to the uh, log of NFL players that came and hailed from the University of Miami. All right, Cam, appreciate the time, man.